Welcome back to Franchise Football here on the Eurocat Games YouTube channel. I'm your host, Husker Eurocat, and today it's preseason football highlights in the Atlanta Falcons franchise. We start out playing the Tennessee Titans, so let's get into the action. The Titans hope to have a good season with Derrick Henry carrying the rock and has a nice block. Tannehill out to the left side, takes off, and finally slides down at the 31. Second four out of the eye formation. Henry is stopped in the backfield. Foye Aluokan is the man that stopped him in the backfield. There you see the draft class from 2021. And the Falcons hope that they will have a really good season with those rookies. Ferkser getting the first down over the middle. And that is quite an outstanding addition to their team in that tight end position. Tannehill throws complete. Julio Jones playing against his former teammates. Catches the ball to 44 of the Falcons and a pass is caught downfield by A.J. Brown. The Falcons just can't keep up with him enough to make the play. Tannehill standing tall on the run and starting rookie safety Richie Grant knocks that one away and it's a field goal try bounces off the left upright and back into the end zone and no good. Later in the first quarter now, Tannehill out of the shotgun, throws over the middle, Ferkser catches that one at the 22 yard line, bringing up third and three. And with the completion to Ferkser out on the right side has a big gain to the 47. A 20 yard gain in all and that is one going to be one of Tannehill's biggest targets. Henry is stopped by a Lukin for a one-yard loss. Second and three. A fake to Henry. The pass downfield to a wide open A.J. Brown in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. A 35-yard strike. Now Ryan trying to get the ball downfield. A high snap and up the middle goes Davis. And he has the first down at the 44. Brooks James then there now at halfback. Gets the fake. Ryan downfield to Pitts. And the Falcons are hoping that he is going to be an outstanding tight end. It seems to be so, so far. And Ryan is caught in the backfield. Taken down by superstar Kevin Byard. Now third and 18. The pass downfield complete to Russell Gage Jr. Just shy of the sticks. Yeah, brings out Koo for field goal up and good. Kaiser hands on. No, it's a pass to Briley Moore. Their undrafted rookie tight end is making quite an impact in the Titans organization. Kaiser on the move again, dumps it off to Marcus Johnson, and he gets down to the two yard line. Kaiser out of the shotgun, throws, and it's complete in the end zone. Briley Moore. That gives the Titans a 14-3 lead at this point. Now Felipe Franks throws complete out to Jeff Baddett, makes a nice spin, and out to the 41-yard line he goes. And that is a nice combination. Franks 
as of quite low overall, but they hope that he can be developed into a quarterback, uh, at least a solid backup, if not the starter on the team. The drive stalls and Koo puts up six points, just barely making that one over the crossbar. And Kaiser goes down in the arms of Sharif Miller, the third year man trying to make a dent in this roster. Kaiser back again, and he is sacked again. Frank's trying to make a statement here before halftime, trying to get some points on the board. Goes long, and it is intercepted in the end zone. Franks tried to get it to Frank Darby going deep into the end zone and it got picked off by Maurice Smith. Now in the third quarter, Franks with the pass over the middle, complete to Lamade Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, a part of that 2019 draft class, hasn't turned into a first string wide receiver, but he is still trying to make it on this squad. Hawkins with a first down run up the left side numbers. Third and three. Franks back to pass, throws complete to Zacchaeus and he is down at the three yard line. What a catch. Crookshank was homing in for the big hit and Zacchaeus was able to hang on to that. Kaiser lets it fly, caught. Chester Rogers takes it out to the 43 yard line. Rogers in his sixth year, never really becoming an outstanding player, but trying to make it on this Titans team. And that is a blown assignment by the Falcons. And Briley Moore takes it the distance into the end zone. Now Franks back to pass and completes this one to Hurst for a first down out to the 34. In the shotgun, Franks throws it up the seam into the arms of Frank Darby and he gets a first down all the way into Titan territory at the 42. Kaiser over the middle, complete to Marcus Johnson and he's another one of those wide receivers. Happens to be an undrafted wide receiver. And on this play, Rodgers makes the catch and goes the distance. Touchdown, Tennessee. Bringing the score to 31 to 17 now. Franks with the play action pass. Has a man open and Frank Darby makes the catch and out of bounds at the 36 of the Titans. Frank showed a lot of patience in the pocket on that one. This one, play action pass. And it's intercepted. Second year cornerback Christian Fulton takes it to the 43 yard line before being knocked out of bounds. Kaiser. Hands it off. Darrington Evans takes it up the middle for a first down to the 28 yard line. The drive stalls at the 10 and the Titans put up a field goal, 34-17 now. Franks back to pass, throws long, caught by Jeff Baddett at the 32 yard line. What a catch in traffic over the top of the defenders and a sideline touchdown catch again by Baddett and he is turning into one of the highlights of this game. You see him drag his right foot and they're gonna call that one a touchdown. 34-24 is the score now. Kaiser goes down in the hands of Barkevius Mingo. A seven yard loss on the play. Now Franks back to pass, throws, and this one's caught by Hurst for the first down into Tennessee territory. 
Franks throws the pass. It bounces around, and Zacchaeus comes down with it. The drive stalls at the four, and Koo puts up a field goal, and it is now 34-27. Kaiser goes down again. Who is it? Mingo. The punt. Goes to bat it, fielded and inside the 15, and he has got daylight in front of him. Couple of men to beat, and he is gone the distance. Touchdown, Atlanta. With that, they tie up the football game at 34 apiece. And with the new rules in the NFL... Uh, there is no overtime in uh, preseason, so it ends a 34-34 tie. That brings us to Hard Rock Stadium and a scrimmage against the Miami Dolphins. And the big talk is Tua Tango Vailoa. Can he bring this team from uh, near disaster into being a top-ranked team in the NFL. He currently has Devontae Parker and Will Fuller to throw it to so they could make for a very potent combination with Miles Gaskin in the backfield. Tua takes a snap, fakes the handoff, and he is going down after some struggle just showing how strong he is. Aluakin finally takes him down. The Miami punt drops inside the 10 and is down inside the one yard line. After a couple of empty possessions, Ryan throws it to Ridley and he's out to the 23. Gaskin takes the hand up, gets some good blocking and he's all the way out to the 46. Duke Riley completely whiffing on that tackle. Tua out of the shotgun throws. Caught in the right flats by Mike Gasicki. Has big yardage all the way to the 21. Out of the shotgun again. Tua throws an interception. Matthias Farley. Grabbing onto that pass and taking it the other direction. Only getting to the nine yard line though. Ryan back to pass, throws complete. Gage has that one at the 26 yard line. Back to pass again and down goes Ryan in the hands of Andrew Van Ginkle. Tua with another strike. And it's Mike Gesicki all the way out to the 39. Miles Gaskin catches it over the middle and into Falcon territory at the 42. Tua throws it, and this one is off the mark. Thrown behind his intended target. Ryan with a dart out to Calvin Ridley, and he takes it into Dolphin territory at the 42 yard line. Again, out of the shotgun and down goes Ryan in the hands of Wilkins. He has, he has the weapons at his disposal if he just has the time to get the ball out. Tua scrambles and gets taken down by the rookie Elijah Molden. Ryan passes, and this is intercepted. Justin Coleman makes the grab on an ill-advised throw by Ryan. Tua hits Waddle on the sideline and out of bounds at the 18. Pass into the end zone, touchdown Miami. A blown coverage assignment, and Devontae Parker Gets it in the back of the end zone. Ryan throws over the middle, complete to Pitts at the 46 yard line with a minute left. Ryan again throws deep and this is intercepted again. 
Xavier Howard with some blockers in front and is taken down by Pitts. That is why you don't throw it in Howard's direction. Tua, back to pass, throws deep and it's intercepted on the other side. Fabian Moreau makes the grab at the 17 yard line. Now in the third quarter, Jacoby Brissett is now the quarterback for the Dolphins and completes that one to Alan Hearns. Patrick Laird takes it to the left and is stopped before he can get any yardage whatsoever. Stopped in the backfield for a two yard loss. And that one is thrown, caught, and it's all the way into the end zone goes Jakeem Grant. That puts Miami on top, 17 to three. Now Franks throws so wide open Frank Darby over the middle, and he's to the 45-yard line. Again, Franks over the middle to Darby, finding a lot of space in the middle of that field. Franks back again and throws complete to Christian Blake at the one-yard line. Can they score from the one? And Hawkins takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Personally, I think that Atlanta is going to have a big decision in front of them, having to decide whether or not to keep Davis as the number one running back or Javian Hawkins, because Hawkins is really coming up with some big plays. Bursett now out of the shotgun, completes this one to Adam Shaheen, and he's inside the 35 of the Falcons. His first reception on the day. Bursett out of the shotgun, and his second catch of the day is a touchdown. Adam Shaheen for the Miami score. 24 to 10 is your score now. Hawkins takes it up the left side, hash marks, and has the first down. Franks with a lot of time, completes this one to Jeff Baddett, and he's inside Dolphin territory at the 47, and down goes Franks, just taking too much time, and can't get away from that Dolphins pass rush. Franks going deep, and it's caught. Frank Darby. Catches it at the 15 yard line. And to finish off this drive, undrafted free agent John Rain takes it into the end zone. That brings the score to 24 to 17. Brissett trying to escape the pocket, does, and he makes a first down. They're going to give it to him. And Aluakan is hurt and being escorted to the locker room. That could be really big for the Falcons defense. Mac Hollins with the grab at the 14 yard line. Brissett into the end zone in an all alone. Hunter Long with the reception in the back of the end zone. Miami tacks on another touchdown at the end of the game and it ends 38-17. And the Falcons definitely having troubles in that game. Now it's back to Mercedes-Benz Stadium and the Cleveland Browns come knocking at the door. I think it'll be real interesting to see how Baker Mayfield <laughs> can get away with making the Falcons defense look like boys. Here he goes and he scrambles all the way to the 48 yard line of the Falcons before he stopped. Back to pass and he stopped. Micah Walker gets him in the backfield. Now Ryan with a first down pass out to Hurst 
taking it all the way out to the 13. Back to pass again, and wow. Gage made an outstanding catch, and that was definitely contested. Chubb takes it out to the 21. A blown assignment, and Richard Higgins takes it all the way out to the 50-yard line. Mayfield doing some scrambling, reverses his field. Oh, he got away, and this is going to be a first down, and he slides down at the 35-yard line of the Falcons. Nick Chubb breaks a tackle, and a second one, and finally out of bounds at the 11. And this one he takes into the end zone, touchdown, Browns. They made that scoring drive look awfully easy. And Ryan with a reception. Ridley all the way into Brown territory at the 48-yard line. An excellent throw and catch. Ryan with a throw in the slot, and it's caught by Kyle Pitts all the way to the 32-yard line. And that was an excellent example of Pitts keeping his composure because it bounced off his back and he caught it over his right shoulder. Now the run and fumble by core Daryl Patterson and picked up by Grant Delpit. A red zone opportunity squandered. And Njoku takes it out to the 32. And having some words with Dante Fowler after the play. Nick Chubb avoids tacklers and is all the way into Falcon territory at the 46-yard line after a 22-yard run. And the drive stalls and a good field goal takes it to 10 to nothing. Gage with an excellent over the middle pass reception. Takes it to the 49 yard line. Hoffrichter punts the ball away and it hits inside the 10 and dies at the two yard line. Now into the third, Ryan back to pass. Throws complete to Sharp. He has it out of bounds at the 35 yard line. Tajay Sharp not getting a whole lot of highlight reel uh, action, but he is definitely one of the receivers to watch on the Falcons roster. Davis takes this one up the middle to the 10 yard line. And the drive stalls. Ku comes on for field goal and it's now 10 to three. Mayfield. Back to pass, a wide open David Njoku in the middle of the field. And the Browns are seeming to get a lot of yardage in the run and the pass game. And down goes Mayfield, undrafted free agent Errol Thompson making the stop. Now into the fourth quarter and Zacchaeus makes an excellent reception and out to the 45 yard line for a first down. Franks standing tall in the pocket and runs out of time, getting sacked by Miles Garrett. And I'm trying to think, what is Garrett still doing in the football game at this point? Keenum throws it out to Kaderil Hodge, and he's out of bounds at the 45-yard line. The ball handed off to Kareem Hunt. And he has a first down to the 18. And I just have to say that that is one loaded backfield. Having Nick Chubb as your primary halfback and Kareem Hunt as your backup. Oh, my. And into the end zone goes Hodge for another Browns touchdown. Franks back to pass, completes it to Hurst, and he has room all the way down to the 42-yard line. 
of the Browns. Fourth and ten. And Franks goes deep into the end zone. Intercepted. Franks trying to get it downfield to Frank Darby. Has Greedy Williams make a play on the ball and an interception. Another blown assignment by the Falcons. And this one's complete. Gone for a touchdown by Derek Willies. Former undrafted wide receiver trying to make this squad. And oh my, another interception. Franks throws a pick six. It's gone the distance by Denzel Ward. And that does it. 33 to three. The Falcons just couldn't get anything going in this game. They had a few passing yards, but that's about it. So the Falcons go one and two in preseason play, but we're not as concerned with that as we are with the strengths of the individual players. So taking a look at their stats should give us some indication as to how productive they were when on the field. We see that Ryan and Franks both averaged an interception per game, which wouldn't be that bad if they'd thrown more than one touchdown between the th two of them in three games. Both being under 60% completion and needs some work. And I would expect a little better from Ryan anyway. A little disappointing is how many times that Franks put it in the air. But if the running game had been producing as it should, he wouldn't have had to air it out like he did. When you look at the halfbacks, Javian Hawkins was neck and neck with and produced a touch better than did the veteran Davis. I would think that the coaching staff is going to need to take a good hard look at the value of Mark Davis as a starting halfback. Not sure why Cordero Patterson isn't on this stat list since I know he had carries because he fumbled one of them away. That just makes me wonder. The wide receivers don't seem to be that far apart because when you look at their stats, Frank Darby was the yardage winner and Jeff Baddett was the reception leader, but the rest weren't that far behind especially when you consider that Ridley had the lowest play count among the starters. Hayden Hurst was a workhorse in the rotation, being on the field in overwhelming 177 plays in the preseason. Now, look at the numbers for Tajay Sharp, though. Only on the field for 48 plays, but snagging 7 receptions for 69 yards. He may be a good target for Ryan in the regular season as well. This stat for the O-line is curious if it's right. In the passing stats, Ryan and Franks combined for a total nine sacks in the entire preseason. And no one on the O-line allowed them. I wonder if that's really accurate because I remember McGarry letting his man through for a couple of those sacks anyway. Regardless, it looks like Coach Gill has some work cut out to shore up that offensive line for the regular season. On the defensive side of the ball, Atlanta's number one tackler will be out for the first game, recovering from an abdominal tear. He's a regular feature in the offensive backfield, and with an interception as well, Aluakon is going to be missed in the season opener. Now, I see that Michael Walker is listed as the number three middle linebacker. I wonder if that will change when the coaching staff takes a gander at his stats for the preseason. He wasn't on the field for just a lot of plays, but he made an impact when he was with one and a half sacks and the number two tackler on the squad. T.J. Green should probably be another one of the backups on the coaching staff's radar. He seemed pretty versatile in the preseason playing on both sides 
uh, of the safety position and at corner on some plays with a good deal of success, I might add. Something that the coaches are going to have to be on the lookout for is a better run defense and a lot better deflection percentage than what we witnessed in the preseason. The duo of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt shredded the defense running the ball during the Cleveland game, and the backfield needs to shore up their ability to knock the ball away before it gets secured for a catch. As far as return guys are concerned, I didn't see any clear winner for kick returner, but when it came to punt returner, Jeff Baddett was the clear winner. Not only did he seem to have a solid change of direction ability, that 85-yard return against the Titans didn't hurt his cause any. It would appear that Coach Gill is cleaning house, and the first thing that he's done is putting Mike Davis on the trade block. A bunch of teams are willing to put up some good draft capital for him, And the Falcons choose to trade with Buffalo for their second, third, and fifth round draft choices in the next draft. (laughs) We'll see if Hawkins can make the impact that it looks like the Falcons are hoping for. That accounts for one player off the regular season roster, so Atlanta has 21 cuts to make. Some of them were quite easy player that had some pretty low overalls, they just got cut. With the practice squad being increased to 12 players, that brought the number to cut yet down to 9 players. Here's where the Falcons chopped a lot of talent. Some younger, but a good number of veterans got the axe as well. That left five positions that needed to be filled to reach that 53-man cap on the regular roster. So it was out to free agency to fill some holes left on the offense and defensive line, as well as the middle linebacker position. First, the attention was given to the O-line and left guard Bradley Bozeman. Atlanta wasn't sure if he'd remain a guard or maybe move to the center position to give second-year man Matt Hennessy a little more time to season before stepping into that leadership role. Next, the Falcons signed left tackle Jerron Christian. His size, strength, and youth are still on his side, so he may be an excellent backup for Jake Matthews. That left a backup needed at the right guard spot and Ben Powers on the Ravens practice squad was signed to the Atlanta regular squad. The thought process was to get a good backup for Chris Lindstrom and they got one. He may even be good enough to be a very versatile backup and get used a lot in the rotation on the O-line. I guess time is just going to tell with him. On the D-line, 31-year-old Zach Kerr was signed for a little more experience. I know that the Falcons were looking for a run stopper, but it may have been better to go with a younger talent. Not sure why someone like Tershawn Wharton wasn't signed, but who am I to second-guess the choices made by the coaching staff? And the last position to be filled by Atlanta was middle linebacker. Atlanta wanted a run stopper, and they found 25-year-old Raekwon McMillan. Now, I would think that with his speed and strength, it'll be a good addition to the talent in the middle of the defense. So with that last signing, we have a full roster. The offense, and especially the offensive line, has been strengthened a bit as well as a better quality of talent in the backup pool. Not an overwhelming transformation, but not bad for the hand that Coach Gill was dealt. The defense was boosted just a little bit, and with Aluakun out for the opener, the help was needed. The outside linebackers will still be a bit weak, 
and will definitely be the weak spot on the Falcons' defense as a whole. I think the defense should be much improved over the preseason squad if both rookies Richie Grant at the safety spot and Taquan Graham at defensive tackle can make a positive impact for Atlanta. Up next is the season opener at home against the Philadelphia Eagles. Philly brought in quarterback Colin Kaepernick for some veteran leadership, not feeling that Jalen Hurts will be able to get the job done at the moment. The also, in addition to a very, very strong O-line, have a one-two punch at halfback with Miles Sanders and Le'Veon Bell. Three superstars on the offensive line as well as a rookie that has an 82 overall rating means that Atlanta's D-line will have their hands full with trying to stop the run. The Falcons are hoping to run the ball a lot, but with Fletcher Cox on the D-line, they may find that problematic. They also have a very solid death secondary with Darius Slay playing at cornerback Ryan has to remember this is a must. He has to remember to avoid his side of the field if the passing attack is going to be successful. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Atlanta Falcons franchise on the Madden Modding Community Broadcasting Network. Philadelphia has a very strong running combo and with Kaepernick throwing the ball, the Falcon defense could be in for a tough first game of the season. We'll find out how prepared these Falcons are when the birds come to Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone. <laughs>